Hi guys, uh, Stephen Trumbull here. I'm the writer and uh, animator of Batman Broken Promise. Um, some of you have said that you would love to see some behind the scenes or additional kind of content about the film. So I thought I'd start by doing a little video here of how I draw Batman. Firstly, there is no correct way to draw Batman. Basically, every single artist or filmmaker and even fan filmmaker has had the chance to completely redesign him from the ground up. You can you can do a different symbol, a different car, a different cowl, suit, everything. Uh, he's probably the most adaptable character in all of fiction. You can always tell it's him, but all the details are up for grabs. And uh, this was basically just my chance to have a go and basically do my own thing. So this is just what it is. Everyone has a different favorite Batman. It doesn't, it, it's not a problem if you don't like this one. <laughs> okay, let's start with the cowl. Now, um, I think this design of Batman came about because a couple of years ago I drew him from memory. And this is just kind of how he always kind of showed up in my head. I'm, I was never very good at like copying comic books. I know some people are very good at that. But I kind of, I, I think every artist has shapes that they like and they always kind of go back to. Um, in this case, I have this kind of, square head very similar to you know bruce tim's batman from batman the animated series but then there's always this kind of i find myself doing these uh coffin shapes <laughs> which is kind of funny um i guess it's quite appropriate for batman um a character so um affected by death and so there's a lot of straight lines but then you get to the the cowl shape here when his is a uh, mouth this opening area is quite deliberately coffin shaped um, which is a quite a deviation from other Batmans that I've seen. Usually the cow goes kind of up like that and you kind of see his whole jaw. Often you'll have his, his chin kind of poking out and you'll see that lantern kind of granite jaw, which works really well in comic books. But I always, I, I like the chin strap. I don't know why. I think it's like, I think in Batman Gotham Knight, there was a, one of the episodes he had it, he had a very kind of tight, almost like a uh, motorcycle helmet style cow. So, um, that's kind of what I wanted. And also, if he gets punched in the jaw in real life, it's not the, 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 the force of the punch that would knock you out. It's the way that it makes your head spin around and your brain knock into the side of your head. So uh, uh, I kind of, just on a logical level, I, I like having the, the chin strap. Let's give him a mouth here. Always a bit of a scowl. I don't think I've ever actually drawn Bruce Wayne yet. <laughs> I've just kind of drawn Batman scowling. It would be weird to see Bruce with this expression on his face. <laughs> Maybe this is why nobody knows um, knows who he is. So here's the nose, and then we go. We have a couple more kind of triangle shapes. We've got this uh, uh, cheekbone here, and another cheekbone there, and then another little triangle here to create like his brow, and then a very square head. And then from there, obviously, we have the scowl. Yeah, bad scowl. Um, a little bit of. Uh, scowl, frown lines there, but not too pronounced. A little bit of the side of his head. And then here's look, probably the biggest um, reference, I guess, to Batman the Animated Series is the white eyes. And we kind of have this kind of long uh, kind of tail <laughs> of white. And then this one that's a bit close to the edge is more of a, just a standard triangle. And then uh, from there, we kind of fill it out with shadows. So again, we kind of imagine we've got like kind of top down shadow create this kind of black pit where his eyes should be. And that kind of creates like that. And then the shadow of the nose and the, you know, the kind of the cow creates this kind of long shadow inside his head. Um, da, da, da. There's the chin, lantern jaw, very Bruce Tim. And then I like the cows that are attached to the neck. Like it's, it's, it wouldn't work in real life. There's a reason why Christopher Nolan redesigned it, but I'm making an animation. And so you want, you just, I just love that kind of long, almost animal like neck. And it creates this very strange silhouette. Uh, so then we kind of put it in with the cow there. I'll use some shading to create the chin. And then it's a lot of lines to create the kind of ruffles of his cape. And then the cape kind of has these very pronounced triangular, kind of almost like spiky, curl, um, spiky um, folds <laughs> on the corners of the shoulders, which again creates this kind of like almost like animalistic silhouette. And it's very graphic, and it's very kind of uh, uh, kind of visual creative license, I guess. And I think it creates this very kind of. My Batman's made out of quite brutalist shapes, like lots of blocks and triangles and things. 
Now, here we go. Uh, we're going to go for the ears. Now, this is basically just a question of taste. Everyone has a, a different length of ear that they like. For this one, I didn't go too far outside of uh, the comfort zone, and I went for a very uh, kind of sober, Jim Lee kind of medium length. <laughs> and, and that's not even like, you know, my own personal choice. It's just kind of how I ended up doing it. I think I, I would happily do... Uh, if I ever did another Batman film, I might do long ears, short ears. Either way, it's like uh, it's kind of it almost like de depends on his mood. I think I wanted this one to just be like quite a standard, standard Batman uh, night on patrol. So I kind of I didn't go too crazy with the ears. Uh, my ears go like straight up. They're quite they're quite uh, you know they just kind of stick up. I know that um, Bruce Timm's Batman they're almost like they kind of fold back like that. Um, and then uh, Robert Pattinson's are like little, <laughs> like little teardrops. Um, yeah, mine are just kind of like like this. There's a little shadow there for that. Um, so that's looking okay. Quite happy with that. And uh, let's add a little bit more shading there. Right. Yeah, that looks that looks like bats. Okay. Now the bat symbol. Now again, everyone gets to kind of create their own bat symbol, which is really awesome. Um, and there's so many good ones. I don't even think mine is my favorite bat symbol by any means. I kind of just stumbled into one uh, just from drawing him over and over again. It's kind of, a, it's a bit of an ugly one, which uh, I kind of like. <laughs> there are some much more elegant uh, bat symbols. This has like just the standard bat head coming out there. And then these are the only like curved lines here, which create this kind of like the, the flapping wings with a little bit of elegance almost kind of Wonder Woman-y um, kind of shape. And then we have these straight lines that kind of create these kind of blades of uh, pointy, <laughs> pointy metal. And it creates this shape here, which kind of is very big. It's kind of almost got that kind of uh, 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 Frank Miller, Batfleck kind of covering most of the chest. It's like, it is it is his chest plate essentially is the whole thing. And that's why it's so big and uh, broad, you know, it's kind of chunky for a reason. It kind of makes sense on a kind of story level, I think. And then if you imagine the top of the chest has got this kind of breastplate as well. This is this is like the same color as, as the symbol. So if you imagine the symbol in the top of the chest is all kind of made out of the same material. And then from here, underneath, there's slightly l different material, lighter material. Um, probably can fold and, you know, crumple and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can obviously go for that kind of bat fleck, uh, weathered and distressed look, like it's seen a lot of action. Um, and it's kind of raised, it's kind of indented. Well, not indented, it's kind of, yeah, raised. So um, kind of creates that look like that. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit, it's almost kind of Nightwing-ish. It's a little Nightwing-ish, it's a little Wonder Woman-ish. Um, basically, I think I just like those shapes, you know. Again, I have no idea if I um, should keep this one. Maybe I will. Like, maybe maybe this is the official uh, Broken Promise one, you know. And it doesn't have to be everyone's favourite. As I say, everyone's got a favourite Batman. And then uh, at the top here, we've got these kind of almost like straps that kind of strap lash the the symbol to the top of the chest and to the shoulders um kind of just a little bit of detail that kind of makes it look good and then down here this is uh okay this might be a bit controversial these are the tiny bat nipples <laughs> so i grew up on the joel schumacher films and the tim burton films and the, i think batman forever was my first you know kind of uh first ever like proper batman cinematic experience and uh, obviously they, these aren't back nipples, but they're kind of uh, just little little details in the in the plating. They could be like little, um, you know, screws or clasps or you know something. But it was just my little thing in there. You you either you either notice it or you don't. But but I enjoy it. <laughs> and then the rest of the kind of bat suit is kind of it's one of those things where it could be armor and it could be just some kind of skin type material but they're these kind of almost like these kind of weird ribs that kind of are in the place where ribs would be so in a way i like to think they're they're some kind of padding um but they almost kind of create this kind of weird animalistic uh six pack essentially um and then in closer shots i would do these little again little shapes little um seams in the plating um 
and then just like create this line like that. So I imagine that if, you know, if you needed to get in and out of the suit, it would actually be quite quick. You know, you've got these little clasps that just kind of tighten into place and just kind of lock him in. Um, and then we have the utility belt, yeah! Now, the funny thing about the utility belt is that everyone always has the symbol there. And for mine, I just didn't do it. I think, oh, see, it's tough, isn't it? Because I think that it's just too many bat symbols. You can't have it on the chest, be a bat, and have it on the belt. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It just, it just seems, I know everyone loves it, but to, to me, I just, I, I find it strange whenever he's, the way he's accessorized himself. So I've gone for a very standard, just square buckle there. And then you have these kind of plated uh, segments going across and then some nice, big, square, chunky, kind of, kind of sewn uh, pouches and pockets where he's got a bunch of stuff. Arms. Now, um, as I said before, I'm, uh, all artists kind of have these shapes that they're always go coming back to. And I, for some reason, just seem to be kind of obsessed with, like, shoulders and backs <laughs> and arms. So, uh, yeah, my Batman's very kind of, he's got this kind of, like, the shoulders are kind of stiff and, and square and, you know, there's a lot of sharp angles and shapes. Um, but then the arms are quite kind of just sculpted and I just put, like, this seam running down them, uh, which, you know, kind of harkens back to the, the back suits that didn't have tons and tons of protection on them. Maybe they're made out of, like, a really strong material or whatever, but, uh, yeah, I didn't need didn't feel the need to put too much detail on that, partly because, you know, it's an animation and you don't want to have to draw so much every time. And then when we come to the gauntlets, i put a little, little bit of, like, a glove there and, you know you know, some bits on the knuckles that, you know, kind of like soft knuckle dusters for punching guys but not doing too much damage. A little bit of a ruffle there. And then we have the, I don't even know what they call them, the the, the spikes on the on the gauntlets. Let me, um, I, I threw in these kind of strap-like shapes, but they're kind of, you know, again, like little little seams running through them and you know they kind of imply that the thing is kind of the gauntlet has been kind of lashed to him but again it's left quite uh subjective and then the shapes i kind of went for this just just squares which kind of you know it doesn't quite work exactly the way you imagine a lot of them they a lot of animators and artists they just do them as spikes or they do them as uh you know kind of like that and uh because they want him to be like cutting things with them and I always see them as a bit of a liability because Batman obviously doesn't want to kill people and if he's throwing his elbows and stuff in a fight he could just chop someone's head off so <laughs> so I kind of it designed them virtually it goes with the kind of brutalist style but also I see them almost as much as you know blocking devices um and shielding devices as kind of, uh, you know, tools to cut with. Sometimes he can cut something, but he has to kind of do it in a certain kind of angle. Um, and that's kind of how I went with that. I think it looks good though. I think it's it's it makes for an interesting, interesting silhouette. And here we have the grapple gun, which is kind of very influenced by Batman the Animated Series, where it was just this kind of, <laughs> kind of quadrilateral tube that he would just kind of, kind of, aim at something and it would go you know and just magically take him anywhere he needed to go um i've had this kind of uh almost industrial kind of uh handle you know very kind of uh almost like construction equipment or something that uh he kind of grips onto and uh it's kind of designed for him it's even got um kind of spaces for where his you know fingers would go so that he can grab it very easily and it's also uh that got that kind of mustard yellow of his um tool belt which uh, is just a very pleasing color to me so I'm always very happy to see it and uh, there's a close up of it in the film during the fight where you see that it's got all these chips and uh kind of imperfections in it like it's been used over and over and over again you know he's never really swapped it out again quite bat flecky in that way don't really need to say much about the trousers other than that I made them really baggy because <laughs> I don't know I just I, I always felt like he, he you know he looks a bit strange running around with like skin tight stuff and I just think that firstly it 
you know, on an animation level, it's just kind of more pleasing to draw. Um, and also I think it gives him this kind of rough and ready kind of soldier look or like, you know, some kind of, uh, special ops kind of guy. Um, and again, kind of like the arm, like a, a, a seam running down it. And then, um, the shoe is kind of part of the, the trousers almost like you could just kind of step into it. Um, cause he's probably needing to get changed quite quickly and all that kind of stuff. And then there's not a lot of detail basically, mainly because as an animator, the audience doesn't look at people's trousers very much. So there's no, there's no reason to kind of put a lot of detail into it. And so it means that it's, again, it's quite subjective, you know, you don't even really need to make too much of a statement about what's actually going on. <laughs> and here is the finished picture. Uh, I think it's quite good. I might ink that actually. <laughs> Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything else. Also go check out the film, which will be, the link will be in the description. And we love hearing about all your comments and reactions and stuff. And please do share it with everyone that you know, because we want as many Batman fans to see it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.